I'm Ash Huggett, and you're listening to the Strong by Ash podcast, where we talk all things fitness, business, and lifestyle. Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode. Uh, it's been probably two weeks since I've recorded something. Um, been a busy, very, very busy last two weeks, so uh, I apologize for my absence for any of the regular people that are listening. Um, anyway, I'm here today, and uh, I have thrown out an Instagram story during the week uh, asking for questions and a QA. and a The, the Q&A seemed to be really popular. Um, I usually get a good amount of people coming in and um, the listens usually are a lot, a lot higher too. So let's, uh, I thought, you know what, I haven't done it in a while, so let's throw it out and see how we go. So uh, I got a list of questions. We're gonna go straight off the bat. Okay, so first one is, how do you start a YouTube channel and what type of gear do you use? Um, YouTube, I haven't really dabbled too much in it uh, of late. I do put these uh, podcast videos up there, um, but I, I did do it for a while. I was probably doing it for a good, maybe a good year or so. And then I just got too busy that I um, stopped doing it. But to start a YouTube channel, I mean, this day and age, you don't need much. Uh, I started off with having a, just a, a phone as the, as the camera. Um, and then I, uh, um, I grew into having an actual uh, mirrorless camera and then I got a Rode microphone as well. So um, it depends on what, uh, what you're after and what you actually want to, to do for the YouTube channel. Um, maybe you're wanting to do videos that are, um, you know, educational videos that are just, you know, in, in a studio or in a house um, and something like that, uh, then you would you would probably I would recommend getting like a microphone. Uh, someone a brand that I would always recommend they are pretty reliable is Rode R O D E. Uh, go and check them out. They've got a lot of um, really really good quality microphones that never really let you down. Uh, but if you're doing anything that's like requiring videoing uh, in terms of like vlogging or things like that, um, you can always just start off with your phone. I know that Rode as well have uh, little microphones that they can attach to your phone. That we don't have anything that's too big and too daunting because that's that was also something for me that I had to get over the fear of holding a camera in front of my face. But if you're having your phone in front of you, it's not as bad, it's not as daunting. Um, so you can also look at doing that. Uh, I would also look at getting a bit of like a, a stick, so a handheld stick. Uh, I use the Jolby stick, I mean, I still use that. It's kind of like a tripod. Uh, and you can adjust adjust it so it's suiting the way that you want to hold it, and it can um, you can keep it on a stand as well. But really, they're the only things that you're going to need. You're going to need uh, a phone. Um, you, you might need a microphone, uh, and then other than that, I mean, like you can have a camera if you really want to. It depends on how how far you want to go with this. But if you're starting out, I wouldn't go for anything that's too expensive. Um, basically, in the, the day, you just need to get the content out there. That's the most important part. And then as things progress, you may get new followers, um, you know, more viewers as well. So, you know, that's when you can look at investing in it as it gets more serious. But uh, I wouldn't go in too deep at the start. So having something pretty basic is kind of where I would start. And then I guess if you're wanting to do any uh, after, after edits, I use a program called Final Cut Pro. Uh, I use that for all my videos. Um, really, really good application to use um it's what all the pros use as well so uh, you can also look at that um but if you don't even want to use that like there are any you're recording on your phone you could edit on your phone too like there's some really really cool apps uh makes things really really easy to, to cut snip it uh add videos on top uh, add background music things like that so you could look at uh there's an app for iphones called video leap uh, i would definitely recommend <laughs> downloading that app uh, or you can look at using Splice as well. But if you want to get any more serious than that, then <clears throat> I would recommend using Final Cut Pro. So I hope that helps. Um, and then I guess the, the steps in starting, uh, just start, you know, quickly start the, start the channel. Um, think of your purpose of what you actually want to achieve with this uh, and then start to get a list of um, topics that you want to, to film um, and, and start. I would probably probably look at trying to record maybe two to three episodes before you launch it 
that way you got some more on the back of, of back of things. So that way you got a little bit of content up. Um, but I wouldn't start off like right off the bat and doing one episode and then just thinking, okay, what am I going to do next? So have a bit of structure with that. All right, uh, let's go to the next one. <sighs> top tips for an effective day. Okay, so with the top tips for an effective day, I would always look at scheduling. Um, I will always schedule my days, and if I don't schedule my days, I don't get half the things done that I want to get done. Um, so I'll set on the weekend, on, on the Sunday, or even a Monday if I don't get a chance on the Sunday, to plan out my entire week. Um, here at the gym, we've got uh, quarterly goals that we've set ourselves, and those quarterly goals is what we're working towards each week, trying to push forward for that. So I'll look at the list and see the, 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 um, the goals that I can achieve in that week based on those quarterly goals. And then once we have the weekly goals set, we're going to break them into daily tasks and then try to make some sort of measurable targets to be able to achieve what we want to achieve um, for the week. So that's kind of how I do that. And then I would look at time blocking as well. So um, planning the most important things at the start of the day and making them your non-negotiables. So you don't want to um, move on onto another topic until you've got what you actually want to achieve out of that day for that topic and don't move on from there. Because uh, it can be really, um, I guess it can be, it can really study you if you start moving on to different topics. And let's say, for instance, you've got three or four things that you want to, you know, tasks that you want to achieve. But if you keep jumping around to different tasks, you're going, you're actually going to go backwards and you won't get much done. So just stick to one topic or one task and do it for that fulfilled time that you need to do. Or maybe there's a certain amount of um, work that needs to be completed and don't chop and change until that's completed. Uh, so I would look at doing that, but time blocking is critical. I know with myself, like I've got a calendar for my entire week. And so I know exactly where I am at certain times of the day uh, of different days of the week. Um, and I just live by that. So I know where the, the time is where, if, for instance, I can schedule in meetings. If people wanna have um, a catch up with me, I can, show, I can tell them exactly when I'm available. Um, I know what I'm doing on Thursday at two o'clock. I know what I'm doing at, you know, Mondays at 3 p.m. You know, like for instance, I've even scheduled these, the podcast in, like I actually have a podcast hour where I'm looking at planning and then recording as well. So, you know, making sure that everything is scheduled. That's how you're going to get the most amount out of your day. All right. Uh, next one. How do you get over the fear of posting on social media? Okay. You know what? Uh, it, it's it's not giving a fuck. Like you just you can't you can't worry about what people are thinking because you start worrying about people what people are thinking. You're not going to be true to yourself anymore uh, of what you're actually wanting to post, um, and you don't want to live that life where you're not being true to yourself. So honestly, it's it's getting your feet wet starting now and stop overthinking it set yourself some sort of goals so maybe you want to start to um, have a goal of uh, something where look is achievable but it's going to make you push so maybe for instance you want to try and do three posts per week well then set yourself the accountability and a deadline of when you want to complete a post so let's say for instance it's three posts in a week well then you want to have the deadline of monday at 3 p.m i want to have a piece of po like a post one post completed. By Wednesday, I want to have at 3 p.m., I want to have post number two completed. By Friday at 3 p.m., I want to have post number three completed. So I would look at doing that. And then once you're having the deadlines, it's going to keep you accountable. Um, but think about your purpose as to why you want to post. Like, is there a sole reason? Is there something that you actually want to achieve out of it? And if so, then like, what's the message? Because I think that's another reason why you, it's another way you can also get over the fear of posting is because you're thinking about that purpose and the message that you want to push out. All right, um, next one. Do you have any recommended supplements that, um, what's it, sorry, do you have any supplements that you recommend or do you take? Uh, I don't really take any supplements. I mean, the most, the, the, I mean, I would recommend taking, if you are training, uh, creatine, monohydrate, um, no brand at all. Like you can get literally any brand of the creatine monohydrate 
and basically it's just going to be able to put in a, in a simple form as it's going to put water into your muscle cells and you the more water that you're having in there the greater strength that you can have which you've got more strength you have to lift a bigger load um you know and you'll be able to increase your training volume so that one is probably the, the most backed supplement based on the science and the research other than that you could look at caffeine as well um that's something that i would look at i, I take um regularly especially before training it will help uh, a pre-workout stim you could look at taking them as well if you need to but when it comes to pre-workout i would prefer to um, use my nutrition for training and performance as opposed to a, a stim um, with the stims with the pre-workouts you're going to get over it and for me i'd rather you know only use it when i need to so like for instance as well even with caffeine like i'll only i'll get an energy drink for i train only when i need to when i'm feeling really flat um, or if i know i've got a really big session then i'm going to increase my caffeine dosage so um yeah all right next one how are you feeling towards the end of your prep okay so i am now eight weeks just over eight weeks away from the end of the prep until the show day I'm feeling pretty good at the moment. Uh, I went through a bit of a shitty phase, I'd say maybe about a month ago, just over a month ago, feeling flat, um, carbs can start to come down, you know, and you get to a point where you, you start to feel really skinny. You feel really skinny, you're starting to look skinny and look sick. Um, you question yourself when you look in the mirror, do you actually even lift? <laughs> um, so yeah, in the shirts, all my shirts are now like, I mean, if you're watching now, like the shirts are, are really loose on me now. Um, my pants don't fit me. They always want to fall down. So I'm always constantly wearing a belt with those things. But overall right now I'm feeling good. Like I said, I, I went through a bit of a shit phase um, and you can actually go through a lot of like low days where you're feeling really sad. Um, I went through a couple of those days it can really hit you emotionally. Um, but then the next day, if you, you know, I, I started to prioritize a lot more of my sleep <clears throat> um, and, you know, I was back up the next day. I was sweet. But it can be hard, especially like training in the gym. Um, you know, some days being on the prep, you just want to, you know, switch off from the world and put your headphones in and just get the training done. Um, but it is, then there's other days where you, you're fine, you know, you, you're feeling good. So it really depends on the days. Um, but I was a recently, I think it was my last diet break. I had an increase in carbs for the week that gave me a really good reset, uh, psychologically, and it's given me a really good run in now for the final eight weeks. So plan is now to have three more weeks of these lower calories. And then we're going to look to increase, um, my carbs up for the final four weeks until show day. So that's the plan. And literally I'm just seeing the finish line. I just cannot wait to start. I actually can't wait to just eat without tracking. Like I've tracked since we're in uh, start of September of 2020. I have tracked every single thing that I've eaten since June 2019. So it's been a really, really long time and I just can't wait to not have to track and just eat. You know, I saw one of the guys in here, I saw, um, and they were eating just leftover, dinner leftovers. And you, you, <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, man, I wish I could just come in and just bring leftovers for lunch. Like it's just the simple things that you, know, you take for granted and that's what I'm missing. So I'm feeling good and uh, just looking at the finish line now and I'm excited for show day, very excited. Um, it's going to be a really good achievement. Um, really, really pumped and just iron off that win. I really, really, really want to win. So we'll see how it goes. All right. Uh, in a deficit, why does the scale hardly budge, but my measurements have dropped? So don't look at your progress based on the, the scale weight alone, because there is a number amount of factors of, of your progress and looking at uh, your scale weight alone is not going to show you the whole result. There's a, the reason of your weight going up and down. And like, if you're weighing yourself every single day, you're going to see that it fluctuates. Um, now like there's, there's four compartments to your body where you have, um, you know, you've got a water or a liquid, uh, compartment. You have a fat 
compartment, you have a lean tissue compartment, and then you've also just got gut mass as well, just kind of like left over from bowel movements like that as well for a compartment. So there's four compartments. You've got two that are going to be a lot more linear, and that's going to be your lean muscle mass and also the fat. And then you've got one that will also always fluctuate each day, which is going to be your, your gut mass one and also your liquid one. And, you know, you could have eaten something that is higher in carbohydrates. You could have eaten something that is higher in sodium. And what generally happens is as the body goes in, as you consume the foods, it starts to go into as glycogen and then adds into water into your body. So they can be used as energy. So if you're eating something that is higher in sodium, you're going to be able to, you're going to have a lot more water retention in your body. And if you're increasing the, like the water is starting to increase in your body and the weight's going to go up automatically just from the food that you're eating. So it's not going to be body fat. And especially if you're in a calorie deficit, you're not going to be putting on body fat. But just understand that the trends and the, the certain foods in there that can play a part into the, the scale weight alone. But that's, you know, looking at tracking the scale weight is only one very small me- variable or one measurement that we actually use for entire progress. Like if your measurements are coming down, there's no need to worry, worry about the weight on the scale. If you had lost, let's say 10 centimeters off your waist, you lost 10 centimeters off your hips, but your weight stayed the same. Are you really going to even care about that? Like if you're actually, if you're getting smaller, like you're not going to worry. Like don't let the weight on the scale dictate um, your progress or how you're feeling because there's so many variables like I'm not even going to go through it all but like you've got hormones you know you've got your bowel movements time of day that you're actually uh, weighing yourself like maybe if, you, if you're a female like you've got your cycle to think about too so there's so many different factors as to why that the weight on the scale changes and why it does it what it does so but look don't read in too much about it and if your measurements are going down like you've just said then you're sweet you're all good all right, top tips for finding the right staff to hire. Oh, nice one. Okay, so when I go into a hiring process and I will sit down with them, I'll sit down with pretty much everyone who would apply for a position here and I don't care if they've got the best resume I've ever seen. If they don't align with my values and the purpose of the business then I'm not going to hire them so we have like our purpose here at squad club is to change people's lives and help people now if they've got this awesome resume and you know like they're answering the right questions but if they don't even mention anything about helping people then I'm not interested in those people like I want the right people and I want the right people that want to be here for the right reasons And if they're not saying the things that are in line with our core values, then they're not going to fit right in our family here at Squat Club, Um, no matter who it is, no matter how great they are, no matter what experience that they've got in, even if it was in the industry, if they're not saying the right things to do with their core values, if it's not aligning with our core values, then I'm not interested in that person. We need to make sure that we have the right people and they also got to be high performers. So we have such a great team here at Squat Club that they all, everyone here gels, everyone clicks, everyone is here for one purpose is to help people and change people's lives. And they are, they're very, very high performers. So, you know, like when I'm speaking to people, I will look and I'll do a bit of a behavioral analysis when I'm speaking to them and ask them certain questions just to kind of see where their values line up. Um, And if they're not saying anything based on our own core values, then I'm not interested. So that's kind of how I find the right team member, um, but not just going by the the resume, because that's not that's not going to show you. Literally, it's not going to show you anything. To be honest, um, I want to see how that person is, and is that person doing the doing it for the right reasons, and is it aligning with us with our right purpose? You know, we have um, a big mission here at Squat Club over the next ten years, and I want to make sure that that person is aligned with that as well. And they want to keep progressing, you know, the business, but then also doing the right thing for the right reasons. So that's what I would uh, say for that. Should I under eat if I went over my calories yesterday? Look, this is a a contextual question. It depends on 
the individual. For the majority of people, I would say, no, don't under eat if you went over yesterday and I would just start the new day fresh. If you are under eating based on yesterday and you start to restrict yourself, you're going to start to give you give yourself a lot of negative uh, a negative relationship with your nutrition. Um, you're going to start to restrict yourself and you're basically starting to punish yourself for doing something yesterday. That's not going to end well. So I would highly suggest into is to you done what you've done yesterday and it's fine. Is it in line with your goals? Perhaps not, but did you have fun? Then maybe you did. So then start the new day as if it was a brand new day and just move on from it. It's not going to be too detrimental to your progress. Um, it may slow down progress to a degree, but there is no point going and restricting calories down just for the sake of that. So I would su- highly suggest is just starting a, a fresh brand new day. Um, it depends again, like I said, on the level of advancement um, or the um, experience of someone or the situation. Someone like myself um, who was doing a comp, if I was overeating yesterday, then I will look at trying to balance that out over the next couple of days to kind of come back under. So uh, when it comes to the majority of people, just start the new day fresh. All right, that's all the questions uh, I have. So I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And that's it. So if you guys did enjoy the episode, then please make sure then you uh, share the episode out on Instagram because it does help, I guess, share the message and also helps grow this channel. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting. And I'll I'll see you guys next week.